dignity of human life in Islam. They're not in the high status of nobility and dignity. Human life, it is not easy to take at your own hands. It is like he has killed all of mankind. And if he saves the life of one human being, it is like he has saved the lives of all mankind. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa ba'd. Our speaker for the day will be Dr. Ahmed ibn Saifuddin from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia addressing us on the topic of the dignity of human life in Islam. A brief introduction about the Sheikh before I do invite him to the stage. Dr. Ahmed Ibn Saifuddin is an associate professor in the Department of Mass Communication at Al Imam Muhammad Ibn Saud Islamic University in Saudi Arabia. He is a founding member for the National Society for Human Rights, as well as being a consultant for international relations at the Global Program for Introducing the Prophet of Mercy. Dr. Ahmed ibn Saifuddin has a BA in Arabic language and literature, which he achieved at the Al Imam Muhammad ibn Saud Islamic University in Riyadh. He has also been an Imam and Khatib of various mosques throughout the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He achieved an Ijaza in the Quran in the city of Abha. He has also been a chairman of the Department of Mass Communications at Al-Imam Muhammad bin Saud University. He was as well a director of the Institute of Islamic and Arabic Sciences of America in the University at Washington DC and has fulfilled many other teaching and da'wah related roles. So I would like to invite to the podium to address us on the topic of the dignity of human life in Islam, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed ibn Saifuddin from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hdihu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shurur anfusina wa sayyat a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah. Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. وأشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا وإمامنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. My brothers and sisters, I'd like to thank every one of you for coming today to listen to what I have to say. And at the same time, we all need to thank those who made it possible by the grace of Allah for us to gather today here and to enjoy this great conference held by Peace TV under the leadership of our brother, Dr. Zakir Naik. Let me say that subject I'm talking about today the dignity of human life in Islam is very important and central to the discussion today in the world. We know that all systems of governance, all religions, all political orientations do emphasize 
the dignity of man and the sanctity of the human life. Yet in reality, we find many violations of this dignity and sanctity of the human life. There are many challenges nowadays regarding this subject. And we know that many societies, many human beings do suffer lots of indignity, persecution, and so many terrible violations of the rights of mankind, men and women. In Islam, it is so important that we look at how Islam has dealt with this. Let me say that many of the people who do violate the human dignity, in fact, shut their eyes to the basic truth. They ignore the basic and absolute reality and only act upon their wishes and they are dominated by their own egos, urges, and drives. They think that the purpose of life is only to seek physical pleasure and obtain material gain. It is immaterial, which means that they use to obtain what they want, and therefore they try their best to leave no stone unturned to obtain this goal even at the cost of the lives of their own brethren, kith and kin. They do not hesitate in this course to suppress others, to subjugate others, and even to shed the blood of innocent persons. History has witnessed this animal tendency of humans and its different forms of expression throughout the ages. It has witnessed conflict, war, human massacres, tortures, and hostilities in their most severe forms. Men of knowledge realize this human weakness. They that created havoc in the annal of history and developed different doctrines, isms, and theories to counteract and curb this tendency, but all failed to deliver the goods. Let me say, in Islam, Muslims and non-Muslims have to realize the fact that Allah created man in the best of form and shape. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ we have created man, meaning males and females, in the best of form. That is, they are dignified by the fact that they were created by Allah with the religion of al-fitrah, the natural way, being able to recognize truth from falsehood and right from wrong. Allah says in the glorious Quran, فطرت الله التي فطر الناس عليها لا تبديل لخلق الله ذلك الدين القيم ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون. This is the natural way of creation that Allah has created people with. There is no change for the creation of Allah. This is the straight religion, but many people know not. And the ayah continues in this regard in chapter Arum, verses 30 to 32. Munibina ilayhi wa taqu, wa la takunu min al mushrikin, min al ladina farraku dinahum, wa kanu shia'a, kullu hizbim bima ladayhim farihun. Turning to him and fearing him, and you shall not be among the polytheists from among the ones who divided their religion and they were into groups, every party 
is happy with what it has. So the fitrah is the straight religion. It is where Allah created man with readiness to believe in him. And he created him with the concept of tawheed instilled and faith instilled in his heart. That's why the earlier generations of humanity at the time of Adam, peace be upon him, until the time of Nuh, had no commitment of violation of Tawheed. This particular straight religion of Fitrah. And that's exactly what we found in the Hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam telling us about this Hadith Qudsi said by Allah. This is reported by Al Imam Muslim where Allah says, وَإِنِّي خَلَقْتُ عِبَادِي حُنَفَاءَ كُلَّهُمْ وَإِنَّهُمْ أَتَتْهُمُ الشَّيَاطِينَ فَاجْتَالَتْهُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِمْ وَحَرَّمَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا أَحْلَلْتُ لَهُمْ وَأَمَرَتْهُمْ أَنْ يُشْرِكُوا بِي مَا لَمْ أُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا What this meant is I created my own slaves pure and on the straight religion all of them, they were Muslims. They were free from sinning, the great sins. And then the shaitan, the satans, came to them and drove them away from their own religion and prohibited for them what Allah made lawful to them and asked them to commit polytheism to take partners with Allah in a way that Allah did not reveal or did not ask people to do. This is how humanity was created in the beginning. The Prophet wasallam telling us about this hadith Qudsi said by Allah. This is reported by Al Imam Muslim where Allah says, I created my own slaves, pure and on the straight religion, all of them. They were Muslims. They were free from sinning, the great sins. And then the shaitan, the satans, came to them and drove them away from their own religion. And prohibited for them what Allah made lawful to them and asked them to commit polytheism, to take partners with Allah in a way that Allah did not reveal or did not ask people to do. This is how humanity was created in the beginning. And from that we can understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after creating the human being from clay, as we know, and then blew the spirit in him and created him with his own hands. And that's another noble act that was given to man because it could have been said, as Allah did with so many and still does, where he wanted something he would say be. And it will be. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ Only two letters. كُنْ be. And that thing will be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his own knowledge and wisdom did not say to Adam be but rather created him with his own hands in a way that suits his majesty. Glory be to him. This is the choice that he took and this is how he honored Adam and his children. And the very famous verse in this regard says, as we find in Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, 
verse 70, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ فَمَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ Till the end of the verses. But the most, the reason why we brought this is this first ayah. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have, speaking in the plural form, as this is the majestic form, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created man and honored the children of Adam and carried them with transport in the sea and on land and provided for them from the good and pure and also he made them superior upon many of his creation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored the children of Adam as he created them. And this continues on for many, many years until man himself, until the human being disgraced himself and indeed went down rather than staying up because Allah created Adam and from Adam created Eve and then from them so many men and women as he says in the first ayah of Surah An-Nisa chapter 4 first verse Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisaa wa attaqu allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham so that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man in this best way and best form. Not only this, but he even asked his own angels, these creatures that were created from light and cannot disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asked them to prostrate for Adam, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ Prostrate as an honor, not as a form of worship. This cannot be possible because obviously the whole message of Islam is about establishing Tawheed and worshiping Allah the Almighty only and no one else. Yet as a sign of honor, Allah asked His own angels to prostrate and bow as a sign of respect and honor to Adam. And they did, except Iblis, who did not do it, and therefore he was kicked out of Jannah and heaven, and he was put to us as a test and an enemy in this life until the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man in this fashion, and he made him in this best form, as he says, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ In many of the verses, if I put him and complete his creation and blew in him from a spirit of mine, not from the spirit of Allah, it doesn't talk about the spirit of Allah, but meaning from a spirit that is mine. And this is something that we need to be aware of, that Allah did not create Adam from his own particular spirit, glory be to him, but rather from a spirit that is part of his creation. Just like when he said, وَطَهِّرْ بَيْتِي And purify my house. The Kaaba is not physically the house of Allah. And again, Ruhi doesn't mean that man is part of the spirit of Allah, but rather it is a spirit that was added to Allah as a sign of nobility and favor upon man. So dignity in this respect 
where man was created in this high position would mean all of the great meanings we would have, such as al-izzah, the honor, al-karama, nobility, al-qima, value, al-sharaf, distinction, al-fadila, virtue. All of these great meanings carry the term nobility and dignity of the human race. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us time after time in the glorious Quran that he created the human being man in the best of form. Then as he said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ Then we took him back to the lowest of the lower levels because of his disgracing of himself. But of course, the exception to that are the ones who believe and who do righteous deeds. For them is a great reward that is wide and abundant. Let me point out that this human dignity that was given to man is in need of preserving it and not in any way putting himself to this lower status. Man needs to keep himself or herself in the noble character, in giving out rights, in establishing justice, in spreading virtues, in lessening the pain and the suffering of humans in spreading peace and good in the world and in fact in encouraging people to come back to their creator and to worship him alone. Islam has come to teach man to respect himself and herself and to know their value and they should not in any way lower themselves to the level of animals. And in fact, if they do not act according to the law that was given to them, they would lose this honor.